Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond and welcome back to some more Natus. Over the wire, web application security, some Python scripting and programming to hack some websites. It's pretty cool stuff. I've been away from this for a while because this challenge level 28 is a little difficult and kind of hard. So this is going to be a long video. Please do bear with me. I hope it's pretty cool though. I hope you learn a few things. Uh, so let's dive right in. I have the web page visible right here because I want to showcase the functionality of this application before I start to look at it in code. So we have this computer joke database where we could search for a query and uh, it will supposedly return information back out to us. Normally we're able to view the source code of some of these applications just so we can learn and understand a little bit more going through the war games here, but unfortunately this level does not provide the source code. So if I don't enter anything into the search, it will go ahead and return some results for us. In fact, it gives us just a couple here. Um, no shortcuts in life unless you right click and find one, blah, blah, blah. It gives us like computer jokes. If we were to put in stuff like anything or please sub, it would return queries that have that string in it. And unfortunately, nothing has please sub in it. That's weird. If I tried to search for the letter A, obviously it will get a couple more results. Um, if we wanted to just go for SQL injection, we particularly could, but obviously that's not going to return anything um, because that text is not in that query or whatever it's trying to run in the database. However, if I just went for like a single quote or a double quote or just a quote, it will be able to return things that have this in here. So that lets me interpret that, okay, it's probably escaping these single quotes and double quotes. It's not just going to make the database crap out on us. So what I'm sure you're noticing is when we actually look at some of these uh, returns, all these things that actually return out to us that give us some information, we are getting a tr interesting change in the URL. Um, it throws us to search.php. It gives us this query variable that that is the HTTP variable that we're working with. And it looks like a bunch of garbage. A lot of encoded data, um, a lot of this URL encoding is likely for trying to hide some special characters, and that looks like it may turn out to be base64 when we actually take a look at it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get to our Python script where we have the code over on the left here and then the output of the, the return and what, what the web page gives us on the right-hand side. So I just made a simple get request to do that. Um, let's actually set this to... Uh, I'll close out that other one there and set this to HTML for syntax highlighting. That looks neat. Okay, good. And let's go ahead and try and make a request now where we actually submit a query. So we're going to end up posting to that URL with data going through here. Um, I'll put this on a new line so it looks a little bit nicer. Let's say query can equal uh, just the letter A, and then that should be everything we need, right? I'm hoping. Will we get anything? Yep. Okay, cool. We get some responses. And now we want to be able to look at the URL. So we can do this. We can actually just check out uh, response.url. And at the very, very top here, you see, okay, it gives us the entire URL. And this front part, the whole actual web address and the search.php and the query, that's all going to be a static length. So if I wanted to scrape out the very, very end here, we could probably just take, how, how many characters is this? You can see at the bottom left, 60, 60 characters selected. So let's go 60 characters uh, from the end and we'll just get, okay, that portion that is the encoded information. Oh, I put that on text, not the URL. Okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and encode this. Uh, we probably won't need URL lib. I'll do this through the requests. I just actually learned this. The requests actually has a utils like submodule that allows you to uh, quote or unquote. I think it's unquote. Let me check. I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. Yeah, okay, cool. Now that is certainly base64. And if we wanted to, with that base64 module included, we could base64.b64 decode and we'll get some raw bytes out of this that Sublime Text won't be able to show for us. So let's actually check out the representation, or REPR, to display those raw bytes. And okay, looks like we're getting a lot of interesting things there. So as I'm exploring this, actually, before I go ahead and show the representation, I want to look at some experiments when we test with the... Okay, we'll just base64 decode it. Let's, again, not do that just yet. I want to save these lines, though, because we will probably keep track of them pretty soon. 
I would just want to see that base64 string for a few of these. And I want to gather these. I want to be able to see, are there any interesting changes when I change my query? So just ls, random inputs. I'll steal a few more of these and put them down here so I can examine them. Let's say just what, and get a few more. Okay. So if you check out this text here, you should notice that the first portion of this encrypted or encoded or whatever this data is, is actually staying the same for the first part right here. It looks like it'll get up to uh, 42 characters in in the base64 encoded values to give us uh, constant and the, the same values. However, everything that follows looks like it will change. So that leads me to think of the conclusion that we are having some static text or some uh, non-changing, just, just regular text or data that's being prepended or put at the very, very start of our input or what goes through. And then that's being encrypted and then eventually encoded. And it seems that it's, it's, it's not particularly changing. The segments that are being displayed here are being encrypted kind of piece by piece, or chunk by chunk, or block by block, and that's telling us that, okay, uh, they're being encrypted the exact same way. That points me in the direction, the direction, did I say, did I say another word? <laughs> I may have said another word. Okay, I didn't want the England cricket team, that's not what I wanted, I wanted uh, ECB encryption. This is a block cipher that is electronic codebook. Uh, electronic codebook, ECB. It is a form of encryption where the message is divided into blocks and each block is encrypted separately, but going through the exact same operation, kind of using the same key. It, it's, it's not chaining these blocks or these chunks together. So you'll be able to see, uh, or at least you'll, you'll be able to determine uh, portions of the encryption scheme uh, as you tinker with it and as you play with it. You'll see some examples here uh, on this Wikipedia page, the image of Tux, the Linux mascot. When it's encrypted using ECB, you're still able to kind of make out what that uh, image actually is. So we can probably do something interesting here, but let's keep in mind that it is using this ECB, a electronic codebook block cipher uh, to encrypt our input. So the next kind of point of attack is to determine the block size or how big or what are what are the what what's the dimensions of these chunks or these blocks that our message is being cut up into so let's take a look let's see how we can figure that out um, what I want to do first is actually determine let's see here what query will we have oh I just deleted those things that I told myself I wanted <laughs> classic let's try and see what the length of the uh, actually decoded or rep like the raw data is after we send it a different and varying lengths of information. So let's do four I in range and let's go about a, like how many characters do we want to go for? Uh, well, how, how long is this to begin with? How long is our decoded one to begin with before we actually check out the, I put an extra string there. Okay. It is 80 characters long. So what could we potentially be working with here? Let's go for I in range 30, maybe 30 characters long, 50, 100, 80. <laughs> I don't know. Let's try it. Let's just go uh, response equals all this. Let's determine the length. Um, we don't have to view it out. Let's just view the length i or query length and then response length will be just like that. So let's now change this query to like the letter a multiplied by i. So let's try and run this, see how long it takes for us. Uh, I forgot a comma here. Okay, so Query length 0, response length 80. This will keep returning and returning and returning for us until, okay, we see something change here. We've got a difference in the response length being 80 and the response length now going to 96. So that's changing the encryption uh, that, that it's actually outputting here for us. 
Um, it looks like we're getting more of these changes as we change our query length, just as we would expect. We're going to hit 100 pretty soon. Let's zoom in on this a little bit. And okay. Okay, we went to 80. Sweet. So this starts at 80 and goes until 80 ends here. And that takes about, what is it, 13 lines? Yep. But we got 96 over here. This length of the response is only 96 for 16 lines. And then as we check out 112, we have 112, again, 16 times. You can see it at the very bottom, I've selected 16 lines. Same thing for 128. If we check that out, we have 16 lines. So what we can assume and understand here is that this very, very first block that we're looking at is obviously taken up by some of the original data or the original string or text that is being prepended on or putting in at the very start of our input. So that can't be that trustworthy, but maybe these other 16 length blocks we certainly can trust. So that's how we can determine the block size. Okay, so now let's try and figure out where our data actually is or, or kind of what, how much room or what buffer do we have to work with within these blocks? So let's check out, let's say our block size can equal 16. Now that we've kind of figured that out, now we can determine what blocks we want to actually check out. Let's do another for loop for each of these. Let's do a print just to get a, a nice visualizer. Let's get about 50 characters of a, of a line there. And let's do for block in range. How many blocks do we want to check out? Well, the original thing was... 80 and we want to go to we don't want to go we don't want to make 80 requests anymore we saw that change happen about with character length of 16 a query length of 16 so let's change that to again 16 or 15 or whatever you want i'm not i'm not choosing 16 because it's a block size i'm choosing it because that's where we saw a change in the response length and it gives us a couple in and out so we can explore some of those now let's check out the actual blocks of the data that we're seeing in the response let's check out about, uh, how about five? Or eight, let's see, 80, the original length was 80, and then we divide that by the block size. So let's check out um, the response that we're getting, just like we've seen before, except now we don't want the length. We want the original thing decoded from blocks, the current block that we're looking at, times block size. So this will originally start at zero, and then up until block plus one times block size. So that'll go 16 bytes at a time. 16 first block, uh, and then 16 to 32, the second block, and then 32 to 48, the third block, etc. So if we wanted to check that out, let's wrapper that to get the raw representation again. And let's print out block, block, data, just like that. And we still want to have our query length visible up at the top here. So now let's check out what this does. Uh, response. What's not? What's going wrong here? Oh, I would actually need that after the after I go ahead and query the the site. Okay. So query length zero, response length eighty, and this is happening over and over again until we get to about sixteen requests, fifteen requests, just fine. So. You can see, again, I'm looking at the raw representation of the bytes here, raw representation of the data. So it's not base64 encoded, it's just separated into different chunks, those different blocks. So the first block, or I guess block zero, and we can actually change this to block plus one so it makes a little bit more sense or has, as to how we are reading it. Okay. Check this out. So blocks one and two seem to be the same for every query length that we send it. So that tells us that that must be the amount that is filled up by uh, the original prepended text that's at the very, very, that's the static text that we don't have control over. It's just being added in at the very start of our input. And that's what it's encrypting. You can see that that doesn't change. Blocks one and two don't change. 
However, block 3 is changing with our input. So, where do we find a threshold where we fill up one block, we fill up block 3, and then we start to move into what would be block 4? Because apparently there's data being added after our input, so we could potentially figure out what that is. Because it's ECB, because it's ele electronic codebook cipher. So, I see in query length 10, in query length 11, block 3 actually stays the same value. So, and it looks like that same way onward from 12, 13, etc., etc. So that means the threshold for filling all of block 3, that where that location in the message where we are, where our input is going, we have filled the block between 10 and 9. So 9 means that there is just one more character that would eventually fill the block. Because once it hits, it hits 10 and 11, it's going to stay the same over and over. And that means we fill the block with our, our A letters. So if we have one last character available in the block, if we send it a query of length 9, we could potentially figure out what that data is following our input because it's being encrypted if we actually figured out okay what is this block what does that block look like if we fill it with one more character and we could keep iterating through that character to try and determine what character is it in the real data that they're appending that we don't know yet we could probably leak it out so that may seem weird that may sound weird um let's let's do it let me show you how we how we can make this happen let's go ahead and say the correct string is just this representation again we'll put that in repr so that is what they would we would assume from that and we could import string to have all of the potential characters here the printable characters for c in string dot printable then we'll make a request where we say a nine times, because we know that that is where we're going to have one last character to fill this block, and we'll put in the character that we're looking at. So then we can go ahead and get what block we're looking at, block three in this case. We'll take that original line that we had and just set block to two, because it is zero based. When we know we're looking at block three, but since it counts zero, one, two, that will be the third block. Um, uh, our answer will be this, again, with the third block that we're looking at. So we can test if answer is equal to the correct string, then we know uh, we found the character that would be following that, that, that uh, input that we supply. So let's include that C right there. We can print trying C, and let's run this. Trying 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., etc. And this will loop through uh, the characters here. I hope this makes sense. I'm going to try and visualize it here with some block stuff. I'll try and make these blocks just like this. So if we were filling up our blocks up until the last segment here, so first and second blocks are filled, and then the third block, we know we just... Oh, okay, cool. I found a percent sign here. Hopefully that will close soon. We are filling up until we just leak into uh, whatever the fourth, fourth block may end up being. So, one, two, three. We fill the third block up until the character that would eventually be starting the next block, starting the fourth block. So, since w the original data is at the very, very end here, following our input, we can supply everything up to that last block, and since it will be encrypted one way or the other, we can keep checking to see what is that character going to be. Is it going to equal what it would have been had it been actually encrypted following that? That's very, very hard to discuss, and I'm, so, I'm sorry if I suck at explaining that. Hopefully you see it visually. Okay, so, since we are 
Since we found the character percent sign, we have an interesting hunch here now, because knowing the application and knowing the functionality of what this program does, it's probably running a query, something like select text from jokes, where the text is like, and this is SQL right here, where it's using that percent sign as a wildcard, where text is like our input with the percent sign following because that's the wild card. It'll match anything that has uh, that notion in it. So this is doing an interesting thing because normally using this technique, now that we found that character, we could potentially shrink our test block and just add the character that we found at the very, very end. So it will encrypt and decrypt the same way we would expect it, because now that we figured out what character was next, we can try that attack again, shrinking down our padding or our, our space that we're filling in until we can leak out more of the message that follows or the text that follows our input. But this is kind of an issue in this case right here, because we actually are probably wrapped inside of a string. We, at least in, in the SQL code that's probably running in the back, we wouldn't be able to actually test this because our input is, again, as we saw from our testing in the beginning, being escaped. Like, we we tried to enter a quote or a single quote, but we know that that's probably not being processed as real uh, SQL commands, so they're going to be escaped with a backslash. So unfortunately, since that will take up more than one character... And that's going to leak over into the fourth block, and we won't be able to test it. We won't be able to track it down since we are testing in just the very, very edge of the third block. Okay, but now we have a hunch. Now we know that maybe this is running SQL injection. Maybe this has some opportunity for SQL injection, except we can't use those single quotes or double quotes, just as I was saying, because they're going to be escaped. We can't just do that SQL, uh, like union select whatever we want blah 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 password from users we can't do that just in the search query because it will be escaped out of it so now we have to take advantage of what we know with this electronic code book with this encryption scheme we could potentially try and figure out what uh what what could we enter what encrypted information could we get that would actually look like we had entered that information since we can encrypt the same way but if we handle that escape sequence properly, because we know that we're going to end up having it eventually, um, following, let's actually keep that, that query here. If we got this single quote to be included in the third block and not no longer really necessary for the fourth block, that way we could be home free, where we could do our own injection following it. So now we just have to figure out how we can encrypt and get the data for that input. This probably sounds weird. Again, I'm going to show it to you. Let's write this code here. Let's say our injection is a space character or a letter A, whatever padding we want to use, times 9. So we fill up the third block, because that's, that's our buffer here. And I'm only going to use nine characters, so just as we saw, that select text from jokes where thing, uh, like blah blah blah, that single quote at the very very end will actually go ahead and be interpreted just fine. We won't have an escape going through, uh, we'll actually just have uh, that single quote at the very very end rather than the percent sign. So nine will be that threshold. If I use that injection and then I add on our single quote, union select, let's just do password from users because that's kind of what we've seen in the previous levels. And we'll just do a comment here to note the very end of the SQL injection or the SQL query. Now we have that string that we want to figure out how we can encrypt it, how we could actually get that to be uh, something that the backend application will handle. So let's do that. Let's determine, first of all, how many blocks is this going to take? And the way that we can do that is we can just say uh, blocks equals length of injection. And we got a minus the 10 here because we have this padding, the A's or the spaces that we're filling it up with, and the single quote. Let's do minus 10. And then let's divide that by the block size. Now, that will get only up until 
we have a remainder. So we have to say, if we have a remainder, we're going to need another block. The way that we can do that is we can just test if length of injection minus 10 modulus block size is not equal zero. So if it's not a, it's, if it's not a straight factor, if we do have a remainder, then we can just say blocks plus equals one. So we add a, an extra block in there. Let's see how much, how much this is going to take up. It's going to take up three blocks. Okay, that's fine. Now what we can do is we'll go ahead and encrypt this. The way we can do that is by checking this response and getting the URL just as we've done before. Instead, rather the query we're working with, we'll say our injection, and then let's check out the block that's returned for us, the full thing. We don't need the representation. We just want the raw bytes, and we don't need it cut at any specific block. We want the full thing. Do I have a number of parentheses there? Okay, cool. We're good. So let's just say raw inject. And if you wanted to see this, you could. If we want to check out the representation, you could. That's just fine. So that is going to be the encrypted scheme that has our injection in it. Now, how are we going to be able to properly put this into a request without actually making the request and having the program encrypt it? We have to encrypt it for the program. Let's trick it. Let's try and give it original good data, like the spaces that we use to, or the A characters that we use to fill the third block. Then let's get the very, very end, like after we have actually filled the third block, just so we know the very data at the, at the very end of the, of the original query. And then fake it with that first part of the, the safe good string. And then let's put our injection in between it. So that probably sounds strange, but... Again, I'll show you in code. So let's get a response with just the A character or our padding 10 times to fill the third block. Let's get that like good base. And let's actually say that our query will be, or the URL that we're end up gonna, the query that we're gonna end up using is good base up to the third block size. So the third block, block size times three, because we know that that's the third block that we want. Now that we've filled it, we can go ahead and add our injection in there. So injection, we'll get the third block size filled, and let's take block size uh, plus three plus blocks, because that is the amount of blocks that are necessary for our injection, times a block size. So that's a full value here. Now we should be able to add on the very, very end that we had from our good base. Again, taking from three blocks in to the very end. So it's, it's faking the query. It essentially just puts our injection in it, encrypts it the way that it would have expected it. Again, making sure the blocks are all in a line. I've said a blocks, I've said that a lot <laughs> throughout this whole thing. So let's check out our, our query right now. Probably something that we can't see, that's fine. Let's go ahead and base64 encode it. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. Let's go from zero to the third block at the start and then other way around. So from 48 in or the third block in, that's my bad. Now we have a proper looking injection string. Okay. Now we want to go ahead and quote this. So it is properly URL encoded. And this was a sticking point for me. It looks like that function does not actually URL encode forward slashes. And that <laughs> made all the difference when I actually tried this challenge. Um, so we're going to have to go ahead and replace those. Let's change those. Forward slashes should be percent %2f in hex. So that does make all the difference in this challenge. Uh, we will need to make sure that those forward slashes are URL encoded. This has to be fully URL encoded uh, for it to work. Okay. 
So this can be our query now. And let's keep in mind that when we actually re retrieve this data, it was in the form of the URL with search.php at the end. It brought us to search.php as a page. And then it had query as the actual HTTP variable that we're working with. So now that we've constructed that variable on our own, let's go ahead and add that in. So we don't post a request, we just get a request with our given query. Now if I run this, display out the text that we're getting from that response, nothing. So something is wrong. Let's explore. I think I see the first problem and that I was using just the string injection as the, the blocks that I was trying to reach out rather than just raw inject. So now let's try and run this. Okay, all right, that was it, sweet. So that is the, the password, that's the flag that we're looking for, but I hope this made sense. I hope this, I know this is a crazy long video, um, but I hope you were able to visualize everything that I was doing because electronic codebook cipher is very, very strange in the way that it encrypts block by block and each block is just a segment of the original message. Um, but we can detect it. We can determine what it actually is. So let's get uh, re and scrape out this flag here. I think it's re.findall. Get a raw string from li. Something in there, anything. To end li with our response.txt. Zero. And we don't need the number of blocks to be displayed anymore. That's just fine. Okay, there is the flag, just like that. So that is Natus level 28. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, kind of a long process, doing some peculiar, interesting things. Uh, I hope it was easy, easy to see the code. I hope it was easy, easy to understand. Uh, we're doing some interesting things, but... Uh, I'm, I was honestly just very amazed and impressed and pleased with this. I thought it was very cool and honestly a really big learning experience for me. Um, I will have to jot down this process, I, this like the the procedure that I went through here to actually okay determine the block size and then determining where the block uh, actually has our input going in and then determining how we could take advantage of the fact that that uh, escape sequence or that that string delimiter, the double quote or single quote would actually be handy for us when we're trying to do our SQL injection. So very, very cool. Very, very interesting. Uh, hope you guys enjoy this. Hey, shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. You're fantastic. I love you. I don't know why Nullpixel has an O in front of his name. You're the best, man. $1 a month on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. $5 or more on Patreon will give you early access to everything they release on YouTube before it goes live. If you want the content right when it's hot, right when it's ready, that's the best way to do that. Please do join our Discord server. Link in the description. It is an awesome community full of CTF players, programmers, and hackers. You can hang out with me and other cool people. We'll be tackling ICTF. Uh, Knock CTF and other competitions that are coming up this week. Hey, I have a link in the description for a Humble Bundle uh, book package that will really help me out. It's affiliate link. Full disclaimer, I'm a sellout. I'm sorry, I suck. But uh, it helps me put food on the table, and you guys and your support really just enables that for me. So thank you, thank you. I'd love to see you on Patreon. Please do like this video, comment this video, subscribe if you're into that stuff. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'd love to see you on Patreon. I'd love to see you in the next video. Get out of here, man.